Friends, the Lord had a word that he was giving through Jeremiah, first and foremost, to his own covenant people, to the city of Jerusalem, to, to those who were called by his name, the chosen ones in the, in the promised land that were still there, to, to the ones who were descendants of not only Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but also of David and, and the kings that were there in that area. But he also had a word that went far beyond that. And we see that, uh, that it extends even to the other nations of all the earth and to the ultimate judgment day that's coming that, that God is speaking about. We see that in Jeremiah 25. So first he says this, the, the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah, all right, uh, this uh, was in the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, so that Nebuchadnezzar was going to be someone God was going to use in judgment against his own people. And so right the very first year when Nebuchadnezzar is reigning, this word comes to Jeremiah. And it refers now back to many years prior to that point. It says, for 23 years, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, to this day, the word of the Lord has come to me. And I have spoken persistently to you, but you have not listened. You've neither listened nor inclined your ear, your ears to hear, although the Lord persistently sent to you all his servants, the prophets. And what was it that God was indicting his people about over, the, over those uh, 23 years that he was speaking? It was about their worship of other gods. See, it was about things they had long known that were matters of grave concern to their great and mighty God, but they wouldn't listen to him, and they kept on worshiping these false gods and adding to this idolatry many other sins. He says, because you have not obeyed my words, I will send for all the tribes of the north. We're talking about the Babylonians now, declares the Lord, and for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he calls Nebuchadnezzar my servant because God is going to use him and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants. But listen to this. Also against all these surrounding nations. And then he, he, he says an interesting detail that would be important. While God's people were in exile, in the book of Daniel, it's referred to again. This little detail from Jeremiah 25, that this exile, at least for Judah would last for 70 years. You'll serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Then after 70 years are completed, then judgment would come upon Babylon. So Daniel would be able to refer to that and say, okay, Lord, I'm counting, and 70 years, it's over now. So now we're looking for your deliverance. That's, that's an interesting little detail. But but the focus here in Jeremiah 25 is about the Lord's wrath that's coming. And now we go beyond the period of the Babylonian exile. It somehow, it seems much, much further out and to many more nations. So it seems to be a growing reality, starting with the time and place of Jeremiah 25, but then going far beyond it. So this is a what God calls the cup of the wine of wrath that the nations will have to drink uh, because of their disobedience, not just Judah now, the nations. So it starts with Jerusalem, the cities of Judah, kings and officials there, but then the Egyptians, the Philistines, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites going to far off lands, Arabia, and all those He's going to use Babylon against them. And then eventually Babylon will have to drink that cup. You know, the interesting thing, though, is Jesus ultimately would drink the cup of God's wrath that was coming against Jews and Gentiles for all our disobedience against God. So he, he drank that cup in a way that no one else could accomplish. So this judgment that was ultimately against all the nations is spoken of here. It says the Lord has an indictment against the nations. He is entering into judgment with all flesh, not just the Jews, not just even the neighboring nations, but all the nations 
of the earth. And somehow it, it says those pierced by the Lord on that day shall extend from one end of the earth to the other. But here's the amazing thing, that the Lord himself would come and he would be pierced for our sake, wounded for our transgressions. And this would be the only hope for us. So yes, there could be hope in the short run that the exile would last only 70 years, but much bigger than that hope would be this larger deliverance that comes through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. Father, thank you so much for every detail that you give us in your great prophetic word, but especially for the great salvation we have that you have brought about through your Son. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.